Hey guys, what's up? So today we are going to start with a topic, carbon and its compounds. But before I start with the topic, don't you think why a particular chapter was specifically named carbon? Like why not they gave you a chapter whose name was oxygen and its compounds, nitrogen and its compounds, chlorine and its compounds and blah 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 blah. Why only carbon? Why is it so special? Okay, so see, so carbon actually is of immense importance. Like for example, you drink cold ring, right? I think almost all of you would like it this. You eat lace, you eat chips, you wear some clothes, like you eat apple, we eat plants, vegetables, and not to forget my favorite, these McD's french fries. Like if you take any of the compound around you, all of them, like many of them will be made up of carbon. Like for example, let me say clothes. They are specifically made up of cellulose. I am writing here the formula of cellulose, which you don't have to remember. But see, this is a compound which contains carbon. The books you might be using in case you study, the papers on which you write letters or let's say some notes, the pencils, whatever you use, all of them are made up of carbon. Let's say the food we eat, the energy we are getting from something known as carbohydrates. So you know the name carbohydrates actually comes from carbon. So they actually contain carbon. So in short, I can say the human beings, they are carbon based life forms. That means we totally depend upon carbon for our lives. I'll tell you something, I read it somewhere that if, suppose carbon would not have been there, then oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, all these things, they would not be able to play what role they play now. So carbon is very important for all of us. You know, the plants we eat, the fruits, the plants, the pulses, whatever we eat, they actually are having carbon dioxide in them. You might be thinking, how so? See, for example, this is a, let's say this is a plant. You know, right, CO2 is present in the Earth's atmosphere. So the plants will intake CO2. You cut the plants, you eat them. So CO2, which was a part of plant, is actually going inside you. Let's say the sugar, which we are using in drinking this coffee or let's say tea, anything. This is also a compound made up of carbon. So anyhow or the other, we are intaking carbon in one or the other form. So finally, now I can say, at least I have now said that carbon is of immense importance and you people agree to this. And thus we can say the name of the chapter was given as carbon and its compounds. You are much convinced now, right? So now let us continue with the carbon thing. Before we start with the chapter, I want to tell you some very basics about carbon. You know the symbol of carbon is C, right? Now see, we represent carbon as C and here at the bottom we write atomic number. And here we write mass number. So I have represented that the atomic number of carbon is 6 and the mass number is 12. What do we mean when I say atomic number is 6? That means number of protons in carbon is 6 or the number of electrons is also 6. And if I'm writing the mass number is 12, that means the number of neutrons is 6. How come? We know, right, mass number is made up of protons plus neutrons. So the number of protons plus neutrons is known as mass number. So if I'm saying protons are 6, neutrons are 6, so the mass number comes out to be 12. And this you can see inside the nucleus. How many electrons are there? 6. And these electrons are revolving around the nucleus in certain shells right so this is how we represent carbon now moving on further with the electronic configuration so the electronic configuration electronic configuration you should know that means the arrangement of electrons in the shell so i have made these shells how the electrons are present in the shell is what is known as electronic configuration so the carbon is having how many electrons? Six electrons. So how will I represent? Two electrons are there in the first shell and four electrons are there in the second shell. 
these electrons these four electrons are also known as valence electron what are valence electrons very simple the electrons which are present in the valence shell are known as valence electrons now the question is what are valence shells like what is a valence shell so nothing but the outermost shell is said to be the valence shell so see here there is n is equal to 1 first shell there is n is equal to 2 second shell this is also known as k shell l shell so this l shell is the outermost shell there is no shell after this so this is the last shell outermost shell and hence it is known as valence shell fine now this is another topic that we have already discussed in previous chapters but once i'll uh, describe these things so that you are very clear with the concepts the topic is ionic and covalent compounds what are ions by the way if you would have seen my videos or otherwise also you should know ions are the species which are formed by the loss or by the gain of electrons like for example sodium is 11 atomic number 11 chlorine is atomic number 17 so i can write the electronic configuration 281 for chlorine 287 now you must know one thing this you studied in class 9th that every element it wants to attain the stable nearest noble gas configuration like for example any element a is there it is happy in itself but somewhere in its mind it is thinking that i want to become a noble gas because noble gases are stable so for example sodium 281 now it is having one electrons in the valence and we know if let's say sodium is losing one electron it becomes na plus which is a cation and it becomes a stable noble gas noble gas why because it is having 2,8 configuration eight electrons are there in the outer motion similarly chlorine is the now where do you think this lost electron goes to so this lost electron might be accepted by a chlorine atom so as to form 2,8,8 that means Cl minus which is a particular anion now we know one thing right whenever Na plus and Cl minus are there they cannot be separated you can't keep one Na plus here Cl minus here and they won't interact no as soon as one Na plus is formed as soon as one Cl minus will form they will be quickly coming close to each other they will get into the compound formation and a compound will be formed known as NaCl. Now here one thing that you have to see carefully, we write NaCl as NaCl and we do not write it Na then a line and then Cl, no. So this is how we represent the ionic compound and what are the ionic compounds having which force of attraction? They are having electrostatic or ionic force of attraction. So this bond, what is bond? Bond is nothing but a force of attraction which holds the two things together. So the bond is known as ionic bond, right? Now the question comes. Let us talk about carbon. So carbon should also be forming ionic compound because we studied that every atom wants to become a stable noble gas. But in the chapter carbon and its compounds, you will see this term covalent bond. So what actually is a covalent bond and like why is it necessary to make these bonds like why not our work will be done with ionic bonds. So see carbon is 2,4 right now carbon wants to become a noble gas. So first of all see I have written a word nearest noble gas. What do we mean by nearest noble gas. So carbon is here with atomic number 6. There are two noble gases which are close to carbon. One is helium, which is atomic number 2. So then is neon, which is atomic number 10. So either carbon wants to become like helium or carbon wants to become like neon. So helium is 2 only, neon is 2,8. That means if carbon wants to become helium, it has to lose all these four electrons and it will become helium. But let's say if carbon wants to become neon, it should be gaining 4 electrons so as to become 2,8. Now the time comes when I am going to stop this video and give you a question. The question is, you have to figure out whether carbon would prefer becoming a helium atom or it would prefer becoming a neon atom. 
so you come up with an answer try to think if you don't get the answer then also and if you get the answer then also you will get the final answer in my next video thank you